Hi everyone. I want to make this year a success for your student, but we have been having a few issues that I keep seeing again and again in our Google Classroom. So if you can help me out and talk to your student, or even better, if you can have them watch this video with you, just to make sure that we set the expectations for what needs to happen, that will help a lot. So I'm going to go over the things that I keep seeing and things that could interfere with your student's grade and stuff like that. So please make sure that you watch that and that your student knows about it. Also, this Monday we're going to start our live meet. So I'm sending out the schedule for that. I'm really excited to finally be in class with your kids and, you know, we'll all get to see each other and talk. So that time is for asking questions, having discussion about our projects and things like that. So I would really encourage you to get your student there. It's not required because I know some of you have schedules that don't allow for that. But if it's at all possible, definitely get your kid into that um, live meet. Alrighty, here we go. First thing is that a lot of kids are not turning in work at all. So please check with your child and make sure that they're turning in their assignments every single time. And in all my years of teaching, I've never had a kid fail art before, but this, you know, working with the online is a little bit different because every assignment gets a grade. And in class, I can kind of be like, hey guys, come on, let's work, let's work when kids are goofing off. But I can't do that right now, so I need parents to do that for me. If your child is not turning in their assignments, that means they're getting a zero. And if they get enough of those, yes, they can fail art. Art is graded, and it's required for every student. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to help your child stay on top of their art education as well as their regular classroom education. That brings us to turning in work on time. So I know that the first couple of weeks of school is kind of fiddly, and I know I have a lot of kids turning in work late right now, and that's okay for this, this week and last week. I expected that. I know some kids are still learning how to use the assignments and upload them and everything. But starting next week, so the assignment that I post on Monday, the 31st, starting with that assignment, Anything that's turned in late is going to be marked down 10 points per week that it's late. So the assignment that's turned in on the 31st, let me just look at my calendar here, or the assignment that I post on the 31st, Monday the 31st, will be due Friday the 4th by midnight. If you turn it in on Saturday, it's going to be 10 points short. You can only get 90 out of 100. If you turn it in the following week, so if you turn it in later than the 11th, it'll be 20 points short and so on and so forth. So make sure that your student is turning in their assignments on time. They should be learning how to do it themselves so that they can turn it in in the right place. The next thing is to turn in the assignment in the right place, and that means that they need to follow the instructions, go into the assignment itself, click on that add or create, and then upload their assignment into there, and then click turn in. So that's how I know and how I see in my gradebook that that needs to be graded. Assignments that are just posted in the stream of the classroom they can get lost in there. There's so much chatter going on in there, and sometimes it's hard for me to see them. I don't get any kind of notification or anything like that that they've been put in there, and so it ends up being me hunting around. And this week, I went through and looked and found any that I could that were posted in the stream and gave them credit, but that is going to be a nightmare going forward. So in order to receive credit, unless you as a parent have made other arrangements with me because you have technical difficulties or something like that, unless that is the case, then your student needs to post their assignment in the assignment itself. So you go into the assignment, you click on, there's a little box on the right, you click on add or create, you get a drop down menu of where you 
can attach the file from. So there's like files and there's Google Drive. You choose which one, find your file, upload it. And then lastly, they have to click turn in. And that's when I get notified that they have work that's been turned in. Otherwise, I might not see it. So I will not be grading work that isn't turned in properly unless, again, you as a parent have made prior arrangements with me to do something else. So your student should be responsible for putting their work in the right place so that I can find it and grade it for them. On that note, posting things in the stream is fine for kids who want to share with the other kids. So that's the point of posting in that main classroom page where it says like, do you, if you want to share something, that's absolutely fine to share with the class, but that's not where you'll get a grade. The last issue that we're having is that some kids are just copying in and pasting other people's work, things that they found on the internet. Um, I have kids that are turning in, like they just paste in a piece of clip art or a photograph and try to turn that in as an assignment. I am just leaving a comment on those. Please resubmit. You need to actually spend 30 minutes on your work and then sending them back to the kids. So they're not getting credit for those. And I have some kids that I've sent those back to and they just keep turning that in again. So I don't know if they're not reading the comments or what, but if you as a parent can help out with that, or if you're a student and you're listening, our, you should be spending 30 minutes of active time drawing or painting or building, creating, okay? And that can use clip art, yes. It can use photographs that you're pasting in, yes, but it's not a slideshow of photographs. It's not, you know, just this clip art. If you're gonna take something and import it into your design and you wanna edit it in the computer, that's fine, but you need to change it. So um, in order for it to be considered your own work, and this is if you have permission to use the original image in the first place, you need to change at least nine things significantly. So that's a lot of changes. It should look very, very different than what the original looked like. So for example, if you want to use a certain picture of something because you feel that this picture says what you want to say in your art, well, that's fine, but crop it, um, you know, draw on it, add lettering, add all kinds of other things, a frame. There's so many things that you can do. You can take an image and, you know, import it into your computer and then paint over it like I did with my superhero drawing. There's just so many different things that you can do. But that's that 30 minutes again, at least, of active time changing it and altering it and actually creating something. If you just paste in someone else's picture or someone else's art, it's not yours. And what I want you guys to understand too is that you can come into copyright issues or issues with stealing someone else's intellectual property. So just because you find a picture online doesn't mean it's okay for you to use that. There are certain permissions that you have to have, and a lot of images will say free for um, public use, free for commercial use, things like that. But if you're not finding that, or if you find something that says copyright, you know, you may not use this image, well then, you really shouldn't. And I'll tell you guys, some of the images that I'm seeing you guys import, they are not free for use. So um, just something to know. I mean. As a student, it's not like you're going to get in trouble for it, but you need to know it moving forward as an artist. Whoops, one more thing. So the very last thing I promise is to um, make sure that you're checking for feedback in your child's assignment. So I try to leave feedback as often as I can. I do have a lot of students, but I feel that it's important for your child to be able to get something back and know um, things that they've done well, things that maybe they could work on. That's really useful as an artist. So I try to do that. Also, in the case that a child needs to redo an assignment or resubmit for some reason, like they just pasted in a picture or something like that, I'll put a comment there, please resubmit, and then send it back to them. So if they're not checking that, then that 
is just going to fly by them and they're not going to realize that they need to resubmit. So make sure that you're having your child check for feedback and check their assignments to see what their grades are. Finish line. So that's all the big stuff for now. I feel kind of like this was kind of negative and I'm sorry for that because it was a video on issues that we're having. But um, there's a lot of positive things going on in our virtual class as well. And I just want to say I have seen some great work over the last couple of weeks. And especially, you know, I really loved this week's one, the happy memory art. It's I'm going through and grading them as they come in as much as I can because I have hundreds of kids turning in work. So I'm just constantly grading. But um, they're... They're just so sweet and so, like, a lot of the kids are really doing such a great job of really making you feel that happy memory, even, you know, if it's not your happy memory. There are just things that I think we can all connect to. And so I've been having such a great time looking at that art, and I really appreciate it. And I just see so much talent in our young artists and so much hard work, which is actually more important than talent. So all of you guys, keep up the good work. You are doing awesome. Just remember these things that we talked about, and I think you will do fine.